it's the recording has begun and also live transcription has begun. Awesome. Thanks, Sean. Yeah, no problem. I got the buttons. All right, everybody. Hello. Welcome to the February 22nd 2022 meeting. Many twos. I've heard that, well, obviously this isn't going to happen again until like 3 3 33. So we're all lucky to be alive right now. And yeah. also, I've heard that today is like the mirror day. So whatever you project in the universe is going to come right back at you because it's a mirror day. So project. I don't know what that means. Good yeah, I don't even know what that means, but all right. <laughs> uh, I will mirror goodness throughout the I universe. Question. I don't question. I just follow. I just do what I'm told. So, ah, Sophia, she was planning to update a set of mirrored repos today. So that is what you're projecting to the universe that will come back on you as productivity from now on. It'll be twice productive. Okay, I'm gonna share my screen. Sorry, everyone. Yeah, Tangent, tangential. Um, if you have not added yourself to the meeting minutes, that would be great. Um, if you don't want to, that's also fine. We don't care. It's all good. It's all good in the hood. Um, all right, so we already went through the mirroring and it is Tuesday, so good job. Um, the next one on our agenda, uh, I'm going to let, actually, I shouldn't have shared because I'm going to stop sharing. Unless you want me to just click on this, Matt Snell, Matt Cantu. Oh, feel free. Okay. Matt has a, a, a meme that he would like to share with us, which literally made me LOL for minutes. <laughs> this is me all the time, just sweating, hoping I don't say something stupid or mess it up. So if I do... Sorry. Wow. Good job. <laughs> Thanks, Matt. <laughs> I appreciate you, Matt. Thank you. Uh, any anyone else want to do a meme? We'll show it here as long as it's appropriate. If it's inappropriate, it won't get shown. However, if you would like to make a meme, do it, and we'll show it here. Uh, for the like seven people that watch these videos, anyway. Okay. Um, inclusivity need to assess documentation and information loss. Now we'll get serious and professional. Thank you so much. And I believe uh, Matt Cantu, did you put this on here? Um, that was, uh, I think, uh, Enoch, I'll let you take that. Okay, we lost you. I think it was Enoch or Enoch. Oh, Enoch. Awesome, is Enoch here? Yeah, I'm here. Okay. Um, you did you look at me too? Yeah. Oh, you to me too. <laughs> Yeah, but I think I think we had that in the previous meeting. We had the, the office hours uh, where we're saying that um, there is just too much information everywhere, and I think Matt saw it um, important to bring it up here in this um, meeting so that um, everybody knows how how important it is and how we actually create an action around this. So, and I think I also shared it with you. So yeah. uh, it's 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 all about. Um, um, having a single source of truth for a lot of information so that it's easy to update, so that it's also easy to, to navigate. Um, just on the previous call we had with Sean and Michael and you, um, Michael just sent me a link to the new, to the new deployed um, Agar website, but I didn't find that anywhere until Sean had to mention it in one of the issues. So yes. Yes, uh, the, what's on our blog is not up to date. If anybody wants to uh, volunteer to update our blog. <laughs> yeah. Are, yeah, so that's something um, I, I, I thought. Be a contribution uh, that would be valued. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Sure, sure. So I thought it was important that the whole community gets to know, because um, also I've had this in all working groups whereby um, at least someone comes up and mentions something up about the documentation and about the information and also where somebody is just surprised that something is actually somewhere but they didn't know where to get it and how to have it until someone else who knew had to come and tell them oh actually there is a link to that so yes maybe it's a concern that we should take on now on a serious note I think that's an excellent point. Go ahead, Matt. I'm just wondering if this is something we should start kind of thinking through, because we're going to do a website redesign. 
the summer and things that we could just start thinking about like what are our priority items that we want to express to people and where do we want those sitting I, I don't even know if that's the right terminology but something along those lines um you know we could start kind of prioritizing that set prior to the work and elizabeth was mentioning that um I, I don't remember the name of um, whoever was working on the handbook in the Google season of docs, but she was saying that um, she that there is a someone who is ready to mentor into creating this whole thing. I don't know how it comes in into much submission of starting to think about how we are going to how we're going to start saving all this information. Yeah, just got reached out to me and said he would love to be a mentor. Um, so we could potentially lump that in with the website refresh. I don't know if that would be a separate project. I'm not sure, but um, we can think about that. But I just wanted to let everybody know, and I put it down here on number seven, but we can move it up here to the top, um, that that's an option for us if we want to lump that in. One of my, my one concern with doing this as a Google Summer of Code project is that we, that a new student might have a really hard time kind of getting up to speed on like what it is that we have. Like a lot of the time would just be spent kind of locating that documentation. I'm wondering if we could just do this work funded differently that's not through Google Summer of Code, but is just through identifying community members to do this work. Because that's something we could we could just pay to do, as opposed to through GSOC. The the content itself, I think, has to be this has to be done by the community. I don't I don't think it's appropriate to have Google Summer of Code students come in and make that content. Uh, however, the structure, I think, is what uh, is what I've talked about in the past. Uh, and the, the specific Google Summer of Code project that I'm proposing is to create a, uh, basically a, a, a knowledge base on the website. So it would be part of the, the website uh, work that we're doing this summer, but it's, it's just one part of it. It's not, it wouldn't encompass the entire website redesign. So it is the, the structure of building a knowledge base on the site is a manageable task. And then the content that we create as a community can be presented through that knowledge base. So okay. I, I, I wouldn't want them to have to build all of that content because as you said, they, they come in and they don't know the answers to these questions or how things are done. Uh, we should be the ones uh, capturing that knowledge. I think, and I think some of it is not just capturing the knowledge, but making it easily navigable for the newcomer you know, so what are the reasons people come to chaos? And increasingly, I'm, I'm hearing the reasons are twofold to see metrics and how they're defined. And also, I think the models are of growing interest to people. And increasingly, the first thing folks are trying are Grimoire Lab and Augur. Um, so giving people like a fast entry, like Cauldron does, I think is one one thing that's important. So it's it's not just that the information scattered. I think that requires some kind of information organization work, which I don't see as a, I see it as a very experienced person who would need to maybe take that on as a lead. Yeah, I think I think something that um, Jaskrat would be helpful mm -hmm. in mentoring would be what Kevin mentioned about um, like doing the coding work to get it presented in the way that we want, but not actually making the content. Yeah, I don't, I agree. Like, I don't think that they could create this content um, or even know what, where stuff is. So um, yeah, just throwing that out there that he's offering. If we can figure something out that would, would be appropriate for GSOC. I would also like to mention, so the, the, the knowledge base that, uh, that I'm talking about is not, uh, it's not just about the uh, uh, the handbook. So it, it is uh, 
it should encompass the uh, a way of presenting the metrics and the models as well. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, I think I, I guess when I think of knowledge base, I have this mental picture of these unused wikis and Lotus Notes documents that companies have tried to keep around with limited success. And 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 so it's like I don't want to create something like that. I think it's I think it's really critical that we make things easier to find. So I mean I think the like web design principle of findability is more critical than a comprehensive knowledge base. I mean, it's not that we wouldn't ultimately have something like that, but it's building our, our website navigation around why people are coming to the chaos project to look for something. Yeah, I, I like to think about think of it as a, a way of presenting uh, the information that we want to present on the website. Uh, and that includes the, the ability to uh, search and organize that that information into uh, uh, easily accessible kind of uh, bits. So I, I don't necessarily think of it as a wiki. This is to me, it's more about uh, uh, presenting presenting metrics, models, and and information about the community in a in a uh, in a manageable way. Back to um, Enoch's point about having it be a single source of, of truth for all of chaos. I agree with you, Kevin. Like right now, I envision the knowledge base is just a place where someone can just go search for absolutely anything about chaos and they will get right. an answer. And right now, like Augur's docs are on Augur site, like the community yeah. handbook doesn't hook into the website. Like it's all siloed and and a bunch of different places. So when I envision a knowledge base, that's what I envision. Like uh, you go to a you know a product support and you see just a search here and then here's some topics but also just search here for anything and you'll get an answer so yeah that maybe that's something that you know a, a gsoc person could help us i don't know whatever yeah so yeah i mean a better search on the website would be helpful kevin do you have an example of something that you have in mind you've mentioned this and i just i am having a little hard time visualizing it and maybe an example would help me a lot just on some other site even Oh, uh, yeah, I can I can take a peek at that. Uh, and maybe I, I think Elizabeth and I are on the same page as well. So maybe we can talk about that and put forth some kind of uh, design ideas about it. I mean, is there one that exists out there that you like at another open source community? You uh, know, you know I, I don't know. Okay. Off the top of my head, I, I don't okay. I don't have an example on my in my mind. So okay. It's, uh, I mean, it's, it's really about, uh, I'll, I'll give it some thought and uh, if I have an example, if Elizabeth and I will talk and we'll see if we can come up with a few examples to okay. show you what we're talking about. That'd be helpful, thanks. Yeah, I can, I can think of a few off the top of my head right now. Like if you go to Logitech support, like there's just a big knowledge base and you can just type in whatever question you have and you'll get an answer. But it's it's more product. It's not like open sourcey, but same kind of concept. So that's just one example. Okay. Um. Anyway, should we go on? Because I feel like this is a big topic we could keep talking about for a lot. I guess just before we leave it, um, the more we talk about it, the more it's sort of like this: how big is this problem, <laughs> and how like it has like immediately all of the like tenants of potential scope creep like we're not even sure if we're talking about just the handbook or the website or how we organize things on github and i think it's kind of like all connected to the same thing in terms of how information is organized and this and discoverable um so at a certain point it might be worth kind of officially scoping it out and figuring out what we want to do i feel like i i'd be curious i guess from your perspective elizabeth and kevin it sounds like you already have a couple of ideas or areas of like interests that could be improved that are maybe I'm maybe overthinking this because it's my nature as a program manager to keep making the picture bigger. <laughs> uh, I don't want to, I don't want to do that. I also it's like bringing all of my alarm bells from UXR and research design where any sort of exercise like this is like a comprehensive giant card source exercise on a huge whiteboard, which is like how some of these problems are done for larger scale organizations. So 
Um, I'm, I'm happy to sort of think through the framing and scoping of this because I realize it could get it could get pretty big and potentially needs to have some boundaries quickly or else I don't think this work is doable. Um, right. so I just want to kind of flag that up front that it might be worth a very targeted discussion and working session just to kind of figure out what we want to do here and then we can figure out how to progress from there. So I'm happy to lead a session like that if it's helpful. Yeah, and I I did enjoy participating in it because I think I think the 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 depth and volume of information and tools that we have are tremendous, but I think we need to focus what we present. And that your the kind of activity you described sounds like it would help us do that. Okay, we can table it for now, but I'll I'll think about what maybe the best way to bring that up is because maybe it shouldn't be during the weeklies, but we'll find a space. That sounds great. Thank you, Sophia. Fair enough. Thank you, Sophia. All right, let's go ahead and move on then since we do have a couple other things. Um, the next one is uh, metrics freeze is almost here. That kind of sprung up on us, I feel like. It, it yeah. did me anyway. <laughs> it's like, oh yeah, that's soon. March 1st is what we had said we would freeze. Um, for the 30 day. So for those who are new to chaos, by the way, um, we do two releases, um, one in spring, one in fall, uh, before we release our set of metrics and say, these are the metrics that we've developed and are okay to use. Um, we have a 30 day grace period where anybody can comment on, on the metrics that are candidates for release. So that will happen on March 1st, we'll freeze any metrics that are in progress um, that are have been released or that are ready to release and we'll open that public comment period up so from March in the month of March that will happen and then we'll release officially a new set of metrics in April. Um, so if for those of you who are in working groups uh, finish up your metrics that are in progress that you want to include in this release and yeah. Anybody comments questions. Something to add. I feel like this is a lighter round of metrics from the working groups, but I think that had been pointed out earlier that oftentimes the the spring one is a little bit lighter. Yeah, I think, I think it also speaks to we have a good number of what would be the core metrics and the metrics models and tools are now some of the direction that that we're moving. I think too, um, we're trying to also refresh old metrics as well. So um, mm -hmm. our velocity yeah. of new metrics might slow down a little just because yeah. we have a lot more going on. It's like with all software, maintenance takes time. Yep. And also some of our working groups have taken on other things um, like the common working group is also kind of addressing some operational issues in chaos. The uh, DEI working group also looks at DEI badging and our DEI audit. So. Um, you know, there's all also that. <laughs> so it's okay, is what I'm saying. It's all right. Yeah, yeah, it's all right. Yeah. We only have a few metrics. We don't need to have a thousand. <laughs> it's all good. Anybody have anything else to add or any questions about that? What what any of those words mean that we've just been talking about? <laughs> do we do we have an idea how many metrics we are releasing on this release? I haven't uh, I haven't taken a look around the working groups. Hey. Go ahead. I think risk is releasing one and evolution is releasing two. Yeah. yeah, I was gonna say I have a sense that it's like one or two. Are or, the pull are the pull requests already in for those, or this is just a we're planning on releasing them? Uh, for evolution right. two today we finished it. I'll create a pull request in a day or two. Uh, <clears throat> for risk, I guess Sean is doing yeah, it. Too. Well, Hopefully finish that up at our next meeting. Okay. We had a good I, discussion at the last one. I just I, I just bring it up because I, I went to the, the chaos translations repo uh, and we don't have any issues for any released metrics. So I'm assuming that no one has started the release process for any metrics. So no no work groups have started the release process for these metrics. Um yeah, I think that's, I yeah. don't know about all of the working groups, but I know that evolution and risk have not followed, have not as done the formal work yet. 
like for evolution, we have finished it today. So I'll start the process. So maybe in a day or two, you will see the pull request and issues for all these things. Okay, cool. Those who are new also to chaos, um, what this means is when we release a metric and we've worked on it, we say this one's ready to go. Um, we put something in our translations repo for our Chinese community. Um, and they are awesome, awesome, awesome. And they will take those metrics and translate them. Um, and then we have a, an automated um, system by which the all the metrics get published into a really, really nice PDF. It's about 200 plus pages long. <laughs> it's a very nice document. It's very thorough. So um, yeah, it's pretty great. Any other questions, comments, concerns? All right. Um, so next, we're just going to, we've kind of revised our, or revived our um, updates on the working group. So we'll do one a week. And this week is the value working group. So um, Vinod, what, what do you have for us? So uh, value working group is working on three new metrics. One is value organization drive. Uh, now we are working slowly. And the other one is contributor net recommendability, which started in the Chinese working group, and then it moves to the uh, value working group. So uh, these two are in the work in progress. And there's uh, I'm, I'm not sure in the upcoming meeting, we'll decide which one or uh, both are ready for release, we'll decide in the upcoming meeting. And then there is a lot of discussion on the fair metric going on. Uh, it's, it's still in the discussion, no work in terms of uh, releasing a metric has been decided as yet. So uh, discussion is going on that. And in the last meeting, we had a uh, collaboration from Dora, uh, Anna Hench, uh, the program manager from Dora. They are uh, trying to assist the researchers uh, uh, really, uh, like they're trying to assess how, how to assess the researchers output. So they're thinking on those metrics and we are collaborating with them. Like it was the first discussion in the last meeting. So maybe we'll uh, move further along that line and help with them to develop more metrics that can help academics or researchers to assess how, how we can assess their impact they are creating through their research or work they're doing. So this is what we have been doing in the value working group. So just, I was part of that Dora talk. It is interesting, like in the academic space, it just, it feels like the, in the academic setting, trying to recognize people for their work in communities is maybe what ospos were 15 years ago right yeah <laughs> kind of thing um so it's this it, it, the conversation is difficult sometimes because metrics seem like they're a little bit later in the conversation like first there has to be an argument made as to why software outputs are something that we should even be looking at from an academic right. perspective, first and right. foremost, let alone measurement of them. <laughs> like, should, do we even care? <laughs> right, no, it's true. Did you have a it's comment, just... Sophia? You... <laughs> <laughs> it's just, yeah, this is coming up in my work as well, and I've been working with another team who's thinking about it from also looking at you know, this potential citation. So like, and yeah. we, like citations are a way that people are assessing sort of the overall reach of their work and influence of their work on other work and with things that are increasingly having components that are in github and other open source channels there we had a conversation with the research team here that was thinking about how to start to quantify those things as sort of the extended arm of their community and their impact um, as part of the impact of the research, not just of a sort of a community or project. And so trying to create separate metrics that would assess the academic and research piece separate from whatever is being developed in the open source project. And it's sort of a, it's a hairy problem. So I'm just generally interested in this and seeing where it goes. 
It is. Yeah. And I think you hit it spot on. And to have that conversation within Google mm -hmm. is probably even further ahead than having that conversation, say, at a university that <laughs> doesn't yeah. have an organization that has even thought about these types of uh, different metrics. Um, so I'd, I'd be interested to hear what you what what comes of that conversation too. At, at yeah. Google. Yeah, it's definitely a conversation we're having in the value group, and and there have been a number of initiatives over the years to count um, software products as academic work output, but by it's still not widely accepted. Can I also just say, as an aside, when I saw this page, I was like, that I love the way this is organized, and this is what I kind of envisioned for the knowledge base. Sorry to do the segue back or the. The backtrack, but this has actually already been shared as a possible. Yeah, <laughs> <It's> a possible <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I really liked it too. Because it's like perfect, like what we, yeah, anyway. No, it is a really nice information organization strategy there. Yeah. Just as That's an awesome. aside, are we familiar with this uh, software heritage project? They are doing an amazing mm -hmm. work with uh, open source. Yes, we've discussed that in the value working group as well. Okay. Okay. Because I'll be doing some collaborations with them and I saw that what they are doing, it's something that we can, but uh, I mean, it's good you already uh, raised that up at the value group. It's something to consider. And uh, Vinod, remind us when value meets. Yep. So, uh, Timings have changed. We are uh, now meeting at 10 a.m. Central Time. Previously, we used to meet uh, every other Thursday, 9 a.m. Central Time, but now it's 10 a.m. Central Time. So our next meeting is day after tomorrow. And then we'll meet every other Thursday. And I, pre I do appreciate that time change personally, because I teach till 9.15 now, so. Yep. <clears throat> yeah, it was a need of all the members who were attending those meetings. So that's all I have from the value working group. Any questions for anyone? Thanks, Bernard. Thank you. Uh, you Bernard. Next week, hoping to get an update on risk. Is that cool, Sean? Will you be around? I'll be around. Awesome. Yeah. I will remove the question mark and put an exclamation point to confirm your participation. Thank you. Right on. Hopefully Sophia's here to actually explain it. <laughs> All right. The next one is just a reminder. We're still collecting GSOC ideas right here. Yes. I know a certain project that's behind on its GSOC we have creation. One idea so far. I'm happy to have more. And there will be more. Here's the link if you want to see what the process is. Do we have a hard deadline for um, submitting these ideas? It's not a hard deadline, but the sooner that we have them up, the better, because Google will be making their decisions by March 7th. And so I imagine in the coming week or so, they'll be actually looking at our proposed projects. And if we don't have any, that's probably not a great look. <laughs> <laughs> so I would uh, I would suggest um, yeah, maybe that end we make it a, yeah end of the week at the latest. It's on my to do today, and I think I have some time after this. So all right, I'll put a thing here. All right. Anyone have questions, comments? Confusion, concerns, anything. All right, we'll go on. We're doing good. Um, the next one is just an FYI. If you are into public speaking and you want to do it, here's a, here's a conference for you. Um, these are hosted by our friends at Tidelift. It's a one day conference called Upstream. Deadline is April 15th to submit something. Um, and it is virtual, so you can do it from wherever, I don't know the time of the event. Oh, right here. 
three oh that's when the cfp closes i'm sorry i don't know what time the event will happen it's probably going to be around uh texas time because i believe um it's kind of based in austin so yeah but here's some of the the things you can talk about of course you can always talk about chaos we love that so but you don't have to if you don't want to we still love you it's okay um, someone just added this uh, OSPOCON as well, probably in conjunction with OSSNA, yeah, which is also, oh, yes, I will accept those cookies because I trust them implicitly. I like cookies of all kinds. Me too. Too much. Yeah. Too, too many cookies. Uh, Monday, March 14th. So that one's coming up. But if you haven't submitted to um, an OSPOCON or OSSNA, that's also another uh, kind of friend of chaos. We like them a lot and they do good, good work. Mm -hmm. So there's lots of options that you can, those are all the topics you can talk about. So like pretty much anything. Many opportunities. Many opportunities. So check that out. If you are new to public speaking and you would like for someone to look at your abstract, before you submit it, we have quite a few seasoned uh, speakers in the group. So feel free to just pop something in Slack and I'm sure somebody would be more than happy to just have a look at it for you. Or if you wanna do a run through, I'm always down to listen. So if you wanna do a practice, if you get accepted, totally happy to do that. Just let me know. Ooh, and there's a MozFest someone just added. Me. Oh, wait, OSS, oh yeah, OSPOCON EU also is a little bit later in the year, but it is in Dublin. And who doesn't want to go to Dublin? I love Dublin. I like Dublin. Yeah, Dublin is awesome. Oh, should we add a fast backstage? I can add a link to it. We've got a, a small talk going on there in March as well. Yes, Matt and Ruth are speaking at FOSS, back, FOSS backstage. I'll have to find our talk. OK, thanks, Matt. Um, and let's see what this one is, MozFest. What is the future of open source? Oh, is this one March 10th? Who's doing this? Me. Oh, there you are. Hooray. Yeah. Ta-da. I was like, wait, where did this happen? Um, fantastic. March Hillary, 10th. Hillary's organizing this. So I was, I was really happy to be part of this. Awesome. All right, anybody else giving talks or know of open CFPs? All right. Well, if you do, let me know. If you want me to add it to the newsletter, happy to do that. We can help spread the word for you. Sean, you guys are giving a workshop mm -hmm. with the Grimo Lab tools, right? At MSR. No, I'm not giving a Grimo Lab tool thing but i believe grimoire lab is <laughs> i saw i saw uh i think with msr jesus is giving a, a workshop series yeah that sounds that's i think they yeah. mentioned that yeah it doesn't surprise me no. yeah I, okay is it not something we can just put so people who are interested in the community can just i think we, I think we should promote it especially if it's virtual which yeah, I think. I'm, I mean, I don't know what MSR and ICSI are doing this year. OK. I'm sorry, if you have a link. Yes, I'll look for a link. And I, I have the link somewhere I'll, I'll, sh I'll share it with you. Awesome. Thank you very much, because yeah. I will happily promote that in the newsletter. Yeah. I also try to subscribe to the Slack. I don't know why it was. Uh, I, I, didn't, I could not find it. The Slack, Slack, was, Slack was wonky this morning, so. Yeah. Yeah, this uh, you can send me an invite that is a way and I don't know how to reach the... Because yeah, I'll, do it. I'll okay. do it right now. I'm going to send it to everybody and I'm going to okay. put it in the chat. So anybody that's not in there and would like to be, you can just click that. I'll put it in the uh, minutes here as well. Four in our Slack. Does, um, does the Slack links expire or something? Sometimes they do. Did that one? Slack, the Slack itself was was fritzy this morning. Okay. So if you experienced a problem this morning, it may simply be that. Yeah. Uh, we did have a few floating around that 
expired because uh, that was my bad. I did not realize you could set it to not expire. So <laughs> that one I just posted in chat should not expire. It should be good. I put it at the top. Oh, perfect. Yeah. Showing our Slack. Here we go. Improving documentation on the fly. Love it. Somebody can make that look prettier if you want. Uh, let's see. We have about 11 minutes left. So let's talk about branding. What's this lovely picture? Pictures. Who wants to talk about this? Looks like Enoch does. Or Matt. Somebody. Yeah, Enoch, go ahead. That was... This is all you. <laughs> yeah, um, I reached out to Matt in a private message of us, like I think that was last week, and um, I was telling him how we could um, have some samples around the branding. So he was telling me the areas that were needed at the moment. So I told him I would do some samples that I started on over the weekend. But while I was actually going on, I realized that but um, there could be a branding guideline I have to follow. So I think I first stalled, I stalled on the, on the ideas that I had. So I contacted him, whether we have a branding guideline that I could follow things like fonts, colors, stuff like that, how to use it. Because um, even that logo I used, I generated it myself because the one I had was a little bit um, pixelated. So, I think um, um, I, 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 I did those, but they were actually incomplete because I got stuck from um, the branding approach. But when um, Matt told me it's um, something that is not yet there, it was already late for me to continue with um, what I had. So I just posted to him what I already had. But um, it was something I was thinking of um, if um, there was chance, maybe I could, I could put some time into it and we could have some designs coming up on a serious um, approach. Yeah, so Matt just put those there to maybe give you a feel of um, what I was trying to play around with and seriously because I had no guidelines to follow and I think I wasn't so, so confident enough to know what approach to take because I thought um, there was already something up on what to use and how to use the components. So that's it. So I don't know um, the comments from <laughs> from such a, a design and how we go forward with that. Um, because we thought we'd bring it to the community and then um, we have a discussion about it so that um, we discuss it as a team and know how to go about it. So I, to me, these, I, are, I, these are wonderful. Go ahead, Sean. No, I think they look really, really good, actually, like much more appealing visually than what we currently have. So my suggestion is that we, Elizabeth, we include um, Nicole in this as well, because she has a lot of interest. And I don't think she's on right now, but she has a lot of interest around kind of the brand and the brand and get guidelines. I did um, reach out to the Linux Foundation to find out if they could help us or if we should go on our own. And the recommendation was go on your own. Yeah, there you <laughs> so go. They said, <laughs> Have fun, kids. They said uh, <laughs> the recommend the, the the point was is that they are often helping many of the larger projects. And that while we can get help, it may be it may be more um, just kind of spotty, you know what I mean? And it might be something that we kind of wait for for a long term. So there was no concern about kind of establishing this uh, for ourselves. So I don't think, I didn't get a sense that there were some overarching LF guidelines that we necessarily had to follow. So that's good news, I think, for us. Yeah, I think so too. Yep. I would also agree. Do you want to do, uh, I forget how we left it after that last branding meeting we had. Do, do we want to set up another meeting with Nicole and Enoch or? Yeah, probably so. I mean, now that if, if Enoch, if you're, I mean, if you're working on these, it's probably important that we think about, you know, what's being produced. Um, yeah, sure, how, sure. 
how we, you know, that, that link, the, the uh, media page link that Matt mm -hmm. had put, you know what I'm talking about? Like yeah. how we get these images there, you know what I mean? Just kind of all that kind of stuff and update yeah. Twitter and make these banners available. Mm -hmm. Those kind of things. Yeah, I can see that um, on the second one, you're like banner blog with a question mark, but actually I was um, trying to to think of of um, a YouTube um, banner. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, I didn't so know. I put blind question mark, so that was a mess. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's why it's a little bit wide and narrow okay. and, uh, height. So yeah, then uh, I think there is one I didn't share, but um, yeah, I don't know how to share that very quickly. Maybe I can put a link as we go on with the discussion, but this is almost our last um Yeah, and you had like... Idea. You had yeah. like a list in in our DMs that was like Twitter banners, YouTube banners, YouTube thumbnails, blog posters, these kind of things. So, yeah, but I think it's most important that um, if there is no manual brand guideline, we first have to deal with that. Um, okay. So that um, we have a guideline into how we create all the other processes. And um, if um, Nicole is interested and also has a bigger picture of this we could collaborate together so yes. that we are all guided and um, we know how to approach all these perfect and she nicole had actually put together a slide deck for the branding guidelines <laughs> like that's cool that's cool uh, maybe like yeah. two or three weeks ago very very recently yeah it was so uh, it's, it's nice to bring all this together yeah so, so I don't know regarding how the technical. Okay, someone is saying something. I was going to say, regarding the creation of these graphics and images, we also need to have a probably have a conversation about how we are uh, editing or using uh, other images that we may find online. So I don't know mm. if you if you built these images completely from scratch, or yeah, if you're sure. or if you're incorporating scratch. icons <laughs> or images from other places. Uh, but so it, um, it could, if these are a collection of intellectual property or copyrighted images from other places, mm. uh, we do need to, we would need to be aware of that. Mm. Sure, I, I should say 80% of the work was from scratch. <laughs> and um, the 20% was from um, free stock, um, free stock libraries that have um, some of those um, PNG files and also the free pick. So I'm really conscious about that. Excellent. That's, that's good to know. I think 20% is still huge not to mention any kind of accreditation or just yeah, to yeah, yeah. acknowledge sure. this. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, but that's it. I think um, we can see how to reach Nicole. If um, if we're to go forward with this, perfect. Thank you so much, Enoch. That's great. Sure. Thanks for the appreciation too. So I put an action item for me to. Um, I'll just do a doodle poll, and we'll find a day. Um, the time might be tricky because Nicole's in Pacific U.S. time, which is pretty far from you. Yeah, that would so, be like uh, 10 hours difference. Yeah, we might we might have a challenge there, but we can sort it out. If we have to do it async, we will. We can do it async too. I mean, we can, we can probably figure that out as well, so. Yeah. All right, so we got three minutes, three minutes left. What do we have, anything? Can we come up with any more memes while we were on the call? <laughs> <laughs> I have a far ahead one, which we've been talking about in the Slack channel, but not in the meeting, uh, which is another chaos con. Um, I think folks have brought up, I think Don mentioned it might be nice to do one attached to open source Europe, given that we had an open source US last year, and if you only want to do one that keeps yes. it more even just geographically. Mm -hmm. um, so I know it's early, but I didn't know how early we had to start putting in requests to the LF if we want to do any sort of satellite or co-located event. So I just, I wanted to bring it up in a forum where either. I think, we, I think their deadline for Europe is May 15th, I want to say. So for events too, not just the CFP. Well, the CFP, but in my recollection is that in general, we've approached them about it 
prior to the end of the CFP period. Okay. Is that yeah. I mean yeah. Yeah. and that's the that's the exact thing is just requesting a room. And I agree with Matt. We might as well we might as well start to work with them to request a room. Yeah. Sooner better than later. I think. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. So Matt G, can I put it in action? Yeah, yeah. that's okay. no that's yeah. like a recurring email that I send twice a year. <laughs> <They're> usually <laughs> very accommodating, or at least they have been in the past. So you just automate that. Just have it automatically do it. <laughs> For the more seasoned event planners, when do you think we should actually start working on this or planning for it? For the start of the summer. What's okay. the date for Dublin? It's like October, I think, mid-October. It's just, it's in the fall, I guess. Yeah, it's in the yeah, fall. September and 13th. Summer tends to be lighter. And so I think if we started to do a little bit of work to get organized, at least before the end of May, we'd probably be happier with ourselves in September. Right on. Thanks. I'd well, like to mention before the end of the meeting, too, that we are spilling over onto a fourth page. So congratulations, everyone, for having so much to talk about today. Wow. wow. <laughs> I, don't if, I don't know if congratulations is the right word, but yay. <laughs> but I think it's because of the images. The, the graphics. Number. I think the hey, hey, don't, don't mention that. Just say, just say <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, well, yeah. Don, I saw you on mute. Did you have a comment? Oh, I was just gonna say, I think it's about the same time Sean said that we should probably start in May, which I think is good because we do need to open the CFP relatively early so that people can plan travel and especially for people who need visas to go certain places. So we just yeah. need to give people enough, enough leave time and talk acceptances. Yeah. And Although, I mean, I don't know, travel is just a crapshoot right now. I mean, who knows? It really is. Ireland dropped all their, vac like their testing requirements to visit. If you're vaccinated. Yeah, uh, BA2 is the next Omicron variant, by the way, that's uh, coming down the pike. So we got that. Yeah, UK dropped all of theirs uh, for travel as well. And they dropped everything. So they're going to stop doing free testing via the NHS, which makes no sense because we get free testing for other things via the NHS, but apparently no longer COVID and no masks. A rip. <laughs> Nothing to say. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Insert big sigh here. Yeah. yeah. Cincinnati's pretty much pretended like it doesn't exist for a while. So yeah. yeah. It's all good. Keep your hands and <laughs> keep your hands and arms inside the car at all times and enjoy it's the, ride. the ostrich strategy. Yeah. <laughs> Can't see it. It doesn't exist. Okay. Um, on that note, we are out of time. Thanks everybody for coming bye, today. Everyone. Hope to see you next week. Have a great day. Toot toot. Everybody. Toot -toot. Bye bye. 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 Toot -toot. <laughs>